Hey, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about chronic venous stasis ulcer. Veins are responsible for carrying the unoxygenated blood back to the heart from various bodily tissues. The venous system operates at a relatively low blood pressure, relying on the concentrations, expansion of the skull to muscles to propel blood. Past the one-way valves in the veins on its way back to the heart, the circulatory system relies on the pressure gradient to push the blood through the arteries and into the veins. When this pressure gradient is inhibited by the blood clots or valve deficiencies, the blood can pull and create larger clots causing venous stasis ulcer. The image demonstrates a normal venous forward flow with a healthy valve that prevents backflow. Next to this, you see the dilated or clotted valves that allow blood to backflow. Varicose veins can lead to venous ulcer. These are the results of malfunctioning venous valves causing pressure in the veins to increase. These typically occur along the medical or lateral distal lower leg. The resulting venous hypertensions causes blood pooling when it is not as efficiently pumped back towards the heart otherwise known as the venous insufficiency. In addition, the increase in pressure stretches the vein walls, allowing proteins in the blood and the blood cells to leach into the subcutaneous tissue, resulting in edema and the eventual breakdown of the said tissues due to the lack of oxygens and nutrients, specifically deposits around the capillaries of the protein fibrin, which normally plays a role in clotting, prevent oxygen and nutrients from flowing to the surrounding muscles and tissues, and in turn leads to necrosis and ulceration. This is known as the fibrin cut theory. Venous ulcers present themselves as a shallow painful ulcers located at, over the bony prominences, particularly the gator area or the ankle bone. Granulations, tissues, and fibrins are also present. One most likely will also be diagnosed with these associated findings in addition to the carnitz venous stasis. This includes edema, venous dermatitis, varicosities, and lipodermasclerosis. Any condition that causes blood to pool in the veins of the legs is a potential cause of the venous ulcers, including varicose veins, deep vein thrombosis, or heart failure of which are a different diagnosis of a venous ulcer. Most venous ulcers are caused by venous valves that do not properly prevent the backflow of the blood. Also known as the venous reflex from the deep veins back to the superficial veins located between the skin and the muscle. In addition, any condition resulting in the muscle weaknesses in the lower leg can decrease the skeletal muscle's effectiveness and propelling blood back to the heart. The physiology of the venous ulcers is not entirely clear. Venous incompetence and associated venous hypertensions are thought to be the primary mechanisms of ulcer formation. Factors that may lead to venous incompetence include immobility, an effective pumping of the calf muscles, and venous valve dysfunctions from trauma. Congenital absence, venous thrombosis or phlebitis, Subsequently, chronic venous stasis causes pooling of blood in the venous circulatory system, triggering further capillary damage and activations of the inflammatory process. Endothelial damage, platelet aggregations, and intracellular edema contribute to the venous ulcers development and impaired wound healing. Let's talk about the common risk of factors that can lead to venous ulcers. Higher risk factors include old age, previous leg injuries, deep venous thrombosis or blood clots, or blood clots in the legs, and phlebitis, which is an inflammation of the vein. Again, usually in the lower extremities, venous ulcers are also more common in women than in men. Diagnostic studies used to investigate venous ulcers include the ankle brachial index, Doppler ultrasound, Doppler bidirectional flow studies and venography.
It is rare that vascular imaging is used to confirm or deny venous ulcers because of the superficial manifestations of the disease. It is easy to investigate on the surface of the skin, augmenting the need for further exams. The main two purposes which the vascular imaging would look for and diagnose thick ulcers are with signs of reflex, this is more of a verifying test to see possibly where the blockage is. This does not usually affect the treatment of the venous ulcers. Due to the fact that there are venous ulcers present, it is inherently known that there must be some venous vascular insufficiency caused by the blockage or perforation. The beginning or stasis ulcers, you will notice skin redness and inflammations on the sacrotaneous tissue and the area of the lower leg. Next, the inflamed skin starts to leak fluid. The small white or yellow areas or dead skin appear. Eventually, the progress wound surface becomes venous ulcer. Without treatment, one of the most typical complications associated with venous insufficiency ulcers is infections of the affected tissues. Treatment options for venous ulcers include conservative management, mechanical treatment medications such as aspirin or antibiotics and surgical options. In general, the goals and treatments are to reduce the edema, to improve ulcer healing and prevent recurrence. Although numerous treatment methods are available, they have variable effectiveness and limited data to support their use. 